we bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of a servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. Let us pray. Lord, this is the hour you have made at which you gather and be fed by heaven alone and not by man. Who can address this great people of God? Knowing fully well that we have different needs, but if your spirit be among us, every one of us will benefit from your word. We therefore invite you, Holy Spirit, that you come and distribute to us according to our needs. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Be seated. Today we are considering the theme, making Christ known to others. I want you to ask your neighbor, that neighbor, when last did you preach Jesus to another person? If you preached Jesus this past week, can I see your hand up? This week running out, this past week, if you preach Jesus, wave it very well if you did. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All of us in this house, we preach Jesus in one way or the other. Whether you use your mouth to tell somebody that Jesus loves you, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Whether you did that or not, you preach Jesus. As we move on to this sermon, we will see very clearly that even when our mouth is not preaching, we are always preaching. But the focus is that what kind of message are we preaching about Jesus Christ? Let's open our Bibles to John chapter 12. We will read verses 20, 20, 21, and 23, and 22. John 12, 20. And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. The same came, therefore, to Philip, which was of Bethsaida, of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. Philip came and telleth Andrew, and again Andrew and Philip tell Jesus. People, Greeks, haven't saw Jesus, haven't seen him, rode into Jerusalem as a king and the citizens, people who were with Jesus, even his disciples and those in Jerusalem except some top religious persons haven't seen these people shouting Hosanna to the king to our king, bless is he who comes in the name of the Lord and wanted to crown Jesus as their king Someone that was born in a manger with a very humble background. Haven't seen this. They said, no, we want to see this man. But they never knew how to meet with Jesus. But the disciples were around. So they met Philip and told Philip, Philip, we want to see your master. Philip told Andrew. And then Andrew and Philip went to Jesus and pass the message to Jesus. If we look at the story critically, we we'll discover that when people want to meet with Oga, the man at the top, they don't just go straight. They go through someone. If you want to see our president today, 
Even if you have his phone number, if you call him and he picks, or his aide he picks your phone, the, your, the, your call, he may need to direct you to someone who knows his schedule and book appointment with you. That is how Christianity is. People don't see our Jesus Christ, but they see us. People don't see our God, but they see us. In Antioch, some heard about Jesus. Some may have had the opportunity of meeting with Jesus. And they knew how Jesus used to behave. But when finally they saw some group of persons and discovered that they were behaving like Jesus Christ, in Acts of Apostles chapter 11 verse 28, what did they call them? What did they call them? Christians. Pagans. They were not behaving like pagans, but when they saw the people, they were behaving, they talked like Jesus, walk like Jesus, behave like Jesus, they were transformed into the image of the Son of God. And they themselves were behaving like children of God. The Bible says, as many as receive him, those who believe him, he gave power to become what? The sons of God, the children of God. So they saw these people as children of God. Jesus said, from henceforth, henceforth, I no longer call you servants. Ye are my friends. Ye are my brothers. Because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But you know, everything the father has given to me, I also make known to you. So, Jesus made the disciples look like himself. And the disciples were not rigid. They were flexible enough. They, were, they made themselves teachable. So, before Jesus died, they were already like Christ. And they were directing people to Jesus Christ. Remember, when they wanted to kill Jesus, the people that we are discussing with Judas Iscariot told Judas, we don't know this, your master. All of you are like him. You talk like him. You walk like him. You dress like him. You eat like him. You preach the way, same way he preached. You were fishermen. Some of you were doing some odd jobs, like Matthew, who was a tax collector. But today, all of you are like him. The same light that shines in him also shines in you, too. We don't know him. How do we know him? We are talking about the miracle worker. The ogre at the top, the geo. Bata, bata. Today you have some churches. If the man of God, the general of Asia is entering the church, everybody lies down. The geo, they did not know the general of Asia. Why? Because Jesus humbled himself and the disciples also humbled themselves and became teachable. So Jesus was able to pour himself upon them. And Jesus Iscariot told them, he said, listen, I will kiss him. Praise the Lord. And when I kiss him, hurriedly hold him so that he will not enter the midst of the crowd. The midst of the disciples. You remember what happened to when Peter was by the courts and there was cold. He was by the fire and a little girl saw Peter and said, you look like Jesus. You are one of his disciples. Peter said, no. He said, if your ascent betrays you. Three good times. They saw Peter and said, you are like him. This man has poured himself into you. Praise the Lord. Jesus gave us his body, gave us his blood. If you look at the altar, you just see that this is a holy communion service. And we will feed on his body and feed on his blood. What makes you look like your parents? It is because of two major things. Number one is a biological trait. The genes found in the DNA of your dad that was transferred into you. Then secondly, there are things we copy from them. As we are growing up, we copy their language, copy their lifestyles. Praise the Lord. You can't be raising a child 
In Nigeria, in worry, and the child is speaking French, you will go take the child for deliverance. So there is the hereditary and the acquired. Things you acquire. So the disciples took this. There was this connection through blood. Another connection through the spirit. And another connection through learning. They were acquiring the characters of Jesus. And finally, they were called little Christ. Jesus said, let your light so shine before men that when they see your good works, they will do what? They will give glory to who? To your Father in heaven. When in John chapter 1, if you read 40 from verse 40 downward, you see that it was John the Baptist who told his disciples, he proclaimed, he said, this is Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God who take care of the sins of the world. And one of the two of the disciples heard when he showed Jesus to them. He had to, they had to follow Jesus and they followed him to where he was staying and they lived with him that day. Do we know that it would have been so terrible for John not to have introduced Jesus to the world? That was his only assignment. Introduction of Christ. A voice crying in the wilderness saying, make way, make straight the way of the Lord. If John had failed, there would have been a problem. It was about 10 years to the deliverance of the children of Israel in Egypt. When Moses had this urge in himself to deliver the children of Israel, but he did not consult God. When he ran away, the children of Israel stayed extra 30 years. But if you read the conversation of God, when God was telling Abraham, God said they will stay for how many years? 400 years. But they stayed for 430 years because the Savior that carried the mandate of delivering the people was tending sheep in Haran. There are souls that are tied to us. If we have been called, we need to call another person. Talk to your neighbor, neighbor. You have been called not to sit and be comfortable, but to call another person. Praise the Lord. After John did that, Andrew, the first thing he did was found his brother and called him. And then also, Jesus found Philip. And Philip had to go and call Nathaniel. And Nathaniel had some arguments in his mind. And he said, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? But when he went, he saw. Among the disciples Jesus called, he was the first man that said, truly you are the son of God. Just imagine if people had stopped preaching. It would have been so terrible. I want to look at an aspect of evangelism. That is the fifth gospel. The fifth gospel. We have four gospels in the Bible. First three, synoptic gospel, and then we have John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and what? And John. But there is a fifth one. You don't find it in the Bible. No, there are things that are called the fifth gospel. For instance, the Holy Land is called the fifth gospel. The land of Israel. Because when you go there, you see the Bible. You don't read it there. You see it and you touch the Bible. Praise the Lord. All the things you have been reading, you go there, you confirm them. That yes, this is true. This is true. This is a tomb. This is where Jesus did this. This is where he did that. This is a desert. It's called the fifth gospel. Gospel. Then we have one heretic book. Heretic book. I don't want to say what the book, uh, how the book came up. I don't put those words into my mouth. 
The book, fifth gospel that was written by someone, it was forged. They also call it the fifth gospel. But this one I'm talking about, this fifth gospel, we can see it clearly in the words of Jesus. Jesus told the disciples, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. It is when you love one another that people will know that you are what? You are my disciples. Because love is a fulfillment of the law. It is a fulfillment of the prophets. Love, all things, the whole of Christianity revolves around love. We can carry the biggest Bible in the world that we want to show Jesus to others. But if what we are doing is not in alignment with what we are saying, we will be called deceivers. Jesus warned the disciples. He said, be careful. Because there are sheep, there are wolves in sheep clothing. But by their fruits, you shall know what? Do we have wolves in churches today? Are they in church? But by their fruits, by the way they behave, we shall know them. You don't know a man of God. Everything about the man of God on the pupils. God can use anybody to speak. God can use anything. Is it not an animal that rebuked Balaam? Eh? On a donkey that had never attended church. Rebuked Balaam. So God can use anybody to speak. Just on the pupit, Christianity on the pupit has very little to do about what people see about us. The Greeks, they met the disciples when they saw that the disciples were the very one shouting that Jesus is king, that he is the son of God. They said, before these close relatives can affirm the sonship, the holiness of this man, we believe in his ministry. If our Christianity is not confirmed by our members, by our wives, our children, our husbands, if our Christianity is not confirmed by these people, we are still hypocrites. A lot of us find Christianity difficult. Why? Because when we accept Jesus Christ, we are told just to confess with our mouth and believe in our hearts. Some of us did not see Christianity as a cross that we need to carry daily. And as you carry the cross daily, before you talk to people, if you are carrying your cross well, before you open your mouth to talk to people, people are already believing you. In 2 Kings, Chapter 4, verse 9. The woman saw Elisha and noticed some things about Elisha. And the woman met the husband and said, I perceive that this man is a holy man of God. Look at our posters everywhere. Ministers of God everywhere. What you see is hot prophets. Powerful man of God. I see your face, I prophesy. Things like that. Holy men of God are vanishing from the world. You have people who can do, raise the dead now, ask the cripples to walk, but the next minute they are in one hotel with a lady. And people are getting confused about Christianity. The fifth gospel is the gospel we preach with our character. How many of us are preaching Christ? Let me tell you one truth. Communication is both verbal and non-verbal. What I'm doing now is both. But verbal communication is the meaning of what you are saying lies on just several percent. 93% of the meaning of what you are saying, which is a non-verbal communication, is 93%. So what we are doing sounds so loud that nobody hears what we are saying. It is a character first. 
People should not see us. Instead of giving glory to God, they are becoming confused about Christianity. Today, people become confused every now and then. People become confused. I watched a short clip on uh, Facebook. Some people, they wrote, we have been saved. But you see them preaching Jesus with bomb shots, we can't go tight, and they were moving, and a woman was weeping and said, you are inviting me to come to your church. You have been deceived. Me seeing you, I see that you are not Christians. The Jesus that saved you, saved your soul, saved your body, and saved your spirit. Today we say God is in your heart. It's a lie. God is everywhere, all over us. People don't see the God in your heart. What they see, if you compromise it, people will compromise what is inside. Jesus said, anything outside a man cannot pollute a man, but it is what comes out of the man that pollutes a man, like murder, lust, adultery, theft. These are the things that pollute a man. Where does our appearance come from? Is it not your mind? Ladies, women in this place, mothers, before you go to any party, don't you plan what you want to put on? You plan it. Where do you plan it? Is it not in your heart? So what you are putting on comes from your mind. So if your appearance cannot display Jesus to the world, what we display him? Is it your heart? Am I seeing your heart? Lots of confusion. The fifth gospel. Before we round up, I just want us to open our Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Verses 2 and 3. Ye are our epistles, written in our hearts, known and read of all men. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of a living God, not in the tables of stone, but in the fleshy tables of the hearts. If we can't preach in the compound, we stay. Our messages outside will become fruitless. If we can't preach Jesus in our offices, it becomes fruitless, the message. I cry to God that I should not bring reproach to this great God. I'm not worthy to work for him. Instead of me to get to the point of bringing reproach to him, he should take me. It's better to die. It is better to die standing than fall and never rise again. A lot of us enjoy this reproach we bring to God. Everybody today, if, almost every lady wants to be a sex goddess. As you are moving by, you Everybody should be bowing down and cashing attention. People are having accidents on the way, car crashing. It's none of your business. You are shaving your aim as you are moving with high heels and with the titans. Your God, which is the God of this world, is receiving his glory. I was asking a lady in my dream, how many men have you seduced? I mean, how many men has gone to bed with you today? And she said, nobody has gone to bed. I said, people have committed adultery with you in their hearts. You don't know their number today. In my dream. And I said, God is teaching me something. In our offices, do we preach with our character? Do we preach? Somebody told me that I called the wife I wanted to marry. The one I want to marry. And I told her, this is the way you must live your life. And I said, how? Why? He said, after two days I met with you, I know there are men of God who still think about heaven. This is a preacher. He goes to crusades to preach. But he was not still sure because he had mingled with many men of God. Even one of them, he told me, Stays in the house with a girl he met in the hotel in Enugu and took the lady to his home and their husband and wife. No bride price paid. And he's preaching, doing miracles in Enugu. Yeah. Let's preach Jesus. Well, are you a gospel of Jesus Christ? The day we shall meet with him, he shall tell some of us, Well done, good and faithful servants. To others, he will say, depart from me, for I know you not. For not those who say, Lord, Lord, we enter the kingdom of God, but those 
Who do what? Who do the will of my Father? Bow your heads, let's pray. Our God and King, help us to follow faithfully. Man born of woman is a few days, and the few days are laden with many troubles. Direct our hearts unto wisdom so that we can make judicious use of these few days. Because soon we shall go and be with you and rest with you eternally in heaven. Help us not to miss this lifetime opportunity. In Jesus' name we pray. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website www.hosannadavid.com. Email us at info at hosannadavid.com. God bless you.